Hi, my name's Lindy. Welcome to the channel. My website is www.lindycowling.co.uk. Email info at lindycowling.co.uk. And the title of the video this evening, and I say the video, it might be two videos. I might go on to do a different one as well. Uh, so the title of this video this evening is Why... more males turn away from connection. Why is it that more males turn away from connection? That would be turning away from the connection with another person or turning away from the connection they have within to source. So statistically, percentage-wise, why is it still a much higher percentage of males that turn away from the connection to another person or turn away to the source within themselves. Now, unusually for this video, I, you'll keep seeing my eyes flicking down there. Um, I don't usually make notes before I come on video. Sometimes I do, but it's, it's unusual for me. But just before I came on here this evening, I was, uh, I was just sitting down and I started making some notes which stimulated actually this video. So I'm gonna keep just flicking slightly down there with my eyes if I'm doing that, that's because I'm just having a look at some of the notes I wrote there. So this is certainly a phenomenon that's not new and all the years that I've been working within that arena, especially within the soulmate kind of arena, connection kind of arena, twin flame kind of arena, all that kind of thing, uh, this isn't a new thing. And this video was stimulated really by the, by the fact that things statistically haven't changed that much in all the years that I've been working in that arena as well. And it really, it's a quick, brief kind of discussion on why that is. So on a very, I usually start from the top and work my way down, but I'm going to start from the more linear perspective and perhaps work my way up. From a linear, ordinary human perspective, males generally, especially if they are in a family unit, that is in a marriage or with children, males generally feel that they have, and sometimes indeed do have, more to lose than a female in the same situation. The reason being, in most countries, perhaps not all countries are the same, but in most countries, and certainly in Western countries, the courts look very favourably upon a mother keeping custody of her children as opposed to a father. So on, in a linear perspective, a male in that situation, perhaps following his heart or perhaps following the course that he is drawn to follow or perhaps following a uh, source and that could be one and the same as the connection that he's met outside of him as well as the inner connection to source. The cost of that is, is quite high because in most cases and certainly in the Western world, he would lose custody of children and, you know, the family there and would only have limited access to them. And that's a far less common scenario with women. Of course, it does happen, but it's far less common. Now, that's if the situation or the connection he was with or in came to that crossroads or point. Because sometimes can people can have connections and obviously it doesn't come to a point where those kind of decisions have to be made or need to be made or should be made. But generally, um, the man or the masculine has much more, in a linear sense, uh, to lose. He also feels like, especially when there are children involved, uh, he also feels in that particular case a lot of responsibility for the family and the family units. And then we come lock, lock, you know, looping over, linking into status. And there is the whole thing uh, with a man about status, uh, how he is seen by society, how he is seen, let's say, to be the head of the family, how he has it links into responsibility again. 
And if he were to change that status or abdicate from that status or walk away from that status, how that would look upon him, how he would perceive, be perceived. There's almost that feeling uh, without within him, but also outside of him, that he would be abandoning those responsibilities. Also, I mean, and I'm working um, very much on the linear perspective at the moment, and I keep flicking my eyes down there to look at my notes here. Uh, there are other reasons as well to do with that status and other consequences of that. As a result of that status, the flip side of that also linked to males is they are the ones that are much more likely to quickly, if they're not already in a marriage or partnership, to quickly walk into a relationship with someone else far more higher statistically than women who are, in inverted commas, single. So this I'm talking now about males that aren't in marriages or partnerships um, or that have come away from marriages and partnerships for other reasons, not to do with the connection, for example, uh, or weren't uh, had a girlfriend or something but weren't actually married or in a partnership. And they are less likely, far less likely to say stay in a single status ever, ever, ever than uh, women are. That's a worldwide statistic, but definitely in the West. And yet overall, the women are more codependent, but overall it's the women that walk their walk and do a period of time finding out who they are, even though they find it very difficult because they're overcoming codependency and codependency programming. It's, it's extraordinary, really. Even though they're going through all of that, they're the ones that are more likely to take some time out to find out who they are and become independent, stand in their own power, and then be very discerning about who they move forward with. The man, on the other hand, if he is in a single state of situation or has a girlfriend, I mean, when I'm talking about single, I mean not actually married or in a long-term partnership or something, he is the one that is far more likely to quickly hook up with somebody else. And if he has come out of a marriage for, for some consequence, other than the connection to source or the connection to another person or the connection to um, his own authenticity, which is all wrapped up with what I'm saying, the male is far more likely worldwide, again, to be very quickly finding another partner and doesn't really do that time uh, on his own. Now, this is very interesting to me. I find it very interesting because when I feel into it energetically, I don't feel that's because he's codependent. And there's an irony to that because logic would tell you, well, that's classic behavior for, well, you know, codependency program or codependence again while he's doing that. But it's funny, I don't get that coming back to me energetically when I feel into it. I feel it's for different reasons. And I feel the main reason is his status and how he's seen in society, how he looks having a woman, a girl, a wife, a girlfriend, a mistress, a lover, a partner on his arm. Um, his whole status as a man and as a masculine, I feel it's more of that. And I definitely resonate that with that energetically when I'm saying it and not really about the codependency side of it for the male. The males generally, and I realize, you know, there are some people watching this channel and some, you know, some of those will be male that are not in the category that I'm talking about here and that are very authentic, uh, very connected to who they are, very uh, genuine in who they are, very clued up to who they are and very much in the heart. Um, and those numbers of males are increasing. But overall, statistically, I have to generalise here, overall, statistically, there's still many more females the males are turning to the source within or turning to a connection and we know all the side of the downside of that is that they have many more codependency 
traits and they hook into codependency programs and everything else and all the other things I've covered in other videos and I'm sure we'll cover again but this is all about the males here so males are far less likely and far less willing to take the risk so what do I mean take the risk I mean Another aspect to this is the man or the masculine or the male energy far less likely to take a risk on being rejected, being turned down, being turned away, um, not being accepted for who they are. They are far less likely to show their emotions, their vulnerability, their susceptibility why a lot of it is nature versus nurture it's depending on the culture and the country you're brought up in a lot of males are brought up in a particular way uh like that stiff upper lip not to show their vulnerability or emotions uh any of that side of them at all and of course that's massively to their detriment they don't know what is expected of them by females but it rubs up against and clashes with what society and the culture they're being brought up is telling them is expected of them so it's it's society perceives one way or programs them on one way to behave education programs them one way to behave and generally emotions in males are frowned upon still even today in the western world 2018 uh, and so being expected to suddenly show their underbelly like a tortoise rolling over and showing you its underbelly or its most vulnerable part is too big an ask for them. They have not been brought up or programmed that way and to be really in touch with their emotions and show their emotions. And again, I'm generalizing there are a percentage of males in the population that do all of these things. But, you know, I'm generalizing here. Uh, really they have the perception, the males, that everybody wants everything from them. Society is telling them to be one way and act one way. And yet the authentic male, the authentic man, the unified zero point fully conscious male is an expectation and, and I think the general male on the street the general man in the streets if he had any interest in this at all the message he would be getting is he is expected to be superhuman overnight and almost like superman and expected to be all things to all people how can he carry out this kind of role and responsibility and have this kind of status and at the same time, he's supposed to show his own underbelly and his vulnerability. And to be honest, I think he feels, well, he's doomed to failure. I think most males would think they were doomed to failure before they even began. And at that point, decide it's too big an ask. I don't think they logically sit and think it through. I think it's almost like an instinct like, well, that's that's too big an ask. Um, I can't be all of those things. I can't show all those things. And if he feels doomed um, before he starts, I mean, how can he live up to that? How can anyone live up to that? I mean, the flip side of that is also we could say with women as well. But, but women don't get that same kind of thing put on them. Yes, women... Never more, especially in Western society at the moment, have we been expected to be in some ways more than we've been before but we don't get the whole expectation put on us of, of the authentic woman's side of it we have the other side of it I mean I've, I was gonna burst that laughing here so far in my life I mean so far who can tell I've never met um, a guy a bloke that's put an expectation of me to be authentic or the divine feminine or anything like that. I, it's never happened yet in, in the connections I've been in. I don't feel the pressure to have that. I think there's a huge pressure on men that are attempting to become fully conscious or becoming conscious, um, having awakenings to be 
Superman, really. Um, and women, we don't have that on us in the same way. We do have other things like multitasking, supposed to be able to run um, houses where we live, you know, families, um, children, balance all that, and work, and be uh, super sexy and all of those things as well at the same time. But that, then that has definitely changed over a period of years. And there are different pressures on women, massive pressures in body image on women, which is why anorexia in girls and young women is off the charts and eating disorders because they, that is programmed into them from very early on. That pressure actually is all over in society. But I'm veering off a little bit here. So we do have pressures on, but not that particular pressure. Where we have the status side of it is, I think I mentioned in a video a couple of videos back, the status side of it is we are judged by whom we are with or not with. We are especially judged if we are single, especially so, and we are also heavily judged according to our body uh, mass, which is appalling really uh but we are um we're also very much judged by our actual chronological age much more than males are much more than males ever are so that's interesting but i'm kind of veering veering off a bit here so it's a it's a massive superhuman superman ask for a man a modern day man who is going through an awakening via connection to someone else or a connection to someone else that has triggered uh, an awakening with him, in him, encouraging him to connect to source or within, or you know, it could be other events, not connection to someone else that's triggered that. It's a big ask. When, he, when he's in a connection with someone else to then almost have the expectation that suddenly overnight he will be in touch with his feelings, he will show his vulnerability, he will be understanding who he is, he will become fully conscious, he will be able to juggle that with the partnership or marriage or relationship he is already in, whilst not abdicating those responsibilities and upsetting the apple cart and being true and authentic to himself while he's going through all that and overcoming the responsibility and the status and the judgment and everything else put on him, whilst having the courage and being brave enough to show his underbelly to the world and to, say, a connection that he's with whether that's a soulmate, a twin flame, a catalyst, a conscious connection, soul family connection, whatever. The reality is there's an irony to this because most of this is based around other people's perception and not actually the person who's going through the awakening themselves, that's the male or female. It's the perception of everything. And perception of everything, of course, is everything because your perception of it almost creates your reality or feeds into that reality or keeps you locked in a reality. The irony is that the perception of a male going through that awakening, and when I say a male, again, don't get cross at me I'm only generalizing again this is, doesn't apply to all males but statistically we have to go with the statistics the statistics have not changed that much and it is still men that are struggling with this more than women but the irony is all women want really women that are becoming fully conscious or awakening are or are going into the heart or are already in their heart are authentic, all of those things being one and the same, women actually don't want any of those things that the male perceives that they want from them at all. All that women really want is to be connected with someone, a male or masculine energy, that is authentic. 
that is honest, that has an open communication, that is not afraid to be who they truly are, is able themselves to be seen, to be heard, to be felt, but is also able to see, hear and feel the person they're connected with. And that's the bottom line. It, it isn't actually complicated. And yet I say that and I don't want to be blasé because when you've got all this other stuff on it, which is perception and other people's beliefs and expectations and judgments, and that comes not just from other people, but it can come from the person they're connected to. It can come to them from the female they're connected to. It, it, it's a bit of, you know, it gets a bit entangled here and it just seems a huge, great overwhelm. And again, I think it, the the men are struggling with it. I can comment mostly on the Western world and in the Western world because that's where I am. But of course, I do work with a huge amount of countries across the world. There aren't that many countries I don't work with that I've never had clients from. There are a few I can count on one hand, but the majority. So that gives you a great overall global picture of things. And you see that really things don't change much according to culture. Each culture has its own advantages and disadvantages, but don't change that much really, the male-female thing. Really the general reasons are, there are a lot of linear reasons in there, like I've listed on this video, to make things more, or seem more challenging for them, and some of those things are genuinely more challenging for them. Also the way that they are brought up to not become conscious. I mean, females aren't brought up to become conscious either. But we are much more generally, much more in touch with our feelings and emotions. You know, some could say sometimes perhaps too much so, we are led by those a lot. So that's easy for us, that's natural. But we do have other challenges as well. Um, so he's got this going on. He has this perception that he has to be all things to all people, superhuman status and responsibility seems to be a very strong uh, within the male within masculine energy so they don't want to abdicate from that and all these different things are wrapped up in it and it takes it takes you know when I said all women want really is is to you know this authentic communication or authenticity in the male It sounds easy, and to me even saying it is easy, but that takes, you have to get to a point in your consciousness and you have to get to a point within yourself and know yourself well enough to be comfortable with showing who you truly are. There is a confidence that goes with that, not an arrogance, and I mean an inner confidence that goes with being able to say this is who I am and being comfortable in your own saying of that and being comfortable in your own skin and you can only really get to that point when you have deprogrammed yourself from these perceptions and beliefs and programs that are all around you to be able to be like I say comfortable in in being that way I could say, I mean, there's a little bit of a hypothesis here that an authentic, I was just feeling into, say, an authentic male within a marriage to somebody else. Say, say a male is going through an awakening process and he is still married to someone else. And I was just feeling into there energetically. Could he become authentic within that marriage and then remain in that marriage still being authentic um yeah that's entirely possible the same as it is for women because you can still be being true to yourself and and the real you within a marriage to someone else and you know and it hasn't gone one hasn't gone left and one hasn't gone right if you ask me again though statistically how many times I have seen a male going through an awakening process 
become fully conscious and authentic and still remain in the same marriage that he was in at the start of that journey. How many times have I seen that? You can see how hard I'm thinking here. Uh, I, can't, I can't give you one example. Because the journey to becoming authentic, there's so much change and deprogramming that goes on that there's a lot of things that shift within and a lot of things that shift around you. And again, it's, it's having that strength and that courage to even begin that journey, you know, in the first place or, you know, not to go so far and then drop off and go no further. I'm going to be honest. If you ask me the same question about uh, women or feminine energy, how many times have I seen women go through an awakening process, become fully conscious, go into the heart and stay in the same marriage they were in when that process began perhaps many years ago? Are they in the same marriage now? Um, there's more than men, but there's not, there's not a heap of difference. There is a... Yeah, there is a higher percentage for sure than men because I can't retrieve any any data on men at all there. There are more women in that situation, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie here. There's not droves more women because usually when they go through a process of becoming fully authentic and fully conscious, there's a lot of change within them and around them and often they go out completely out of sync with the situation they're in or the person they're with. Yes, a percentage of them go through a, a journey and then almost like, you know, a small percentage connect back up with the original um, husband or partner. Later on, when husband or partner have been on a journey different to them and uh, the wife has got so far and then they've come back around each other, it's a small percent, to be honest, usually what happens statistically is the feminine energy oh look the ooh, sun just came out then the feminine energy will uh embrace the journey go inwards go through the changes that come with that and then they will do a portion of time independently and standing in their power now you can see the beauty to all this you could say to me why is that it links into that codependency program again i feel the double-edged sword here for women is they have to learn that very painful bit of no longer being codependent and getting free of the codependency programs i feel that's why they have to do that bit because i don't sense energetically that the men don't seem to be running that codependency in the same way it's different reasons why they stay entrenched still very challenging for them and in, in some ways, I think the men have far more challenges than the women do, actually. But codependency doesn't really feel like one of them. Not really. It's it, not energetically anyway. So I hope you found that interesting. And I hope you found that um, food for thought, really. Interesting. I, I do energetically, I felt into this and felt into this if there was anything else underneath it or anything I felt I was missing there. And at the moment, I'm not picking up on that. As you know, this channel is, a, is an evolutionary channel. It's shifting and changing in energy just as I'm shifting and changing in energy. And as it's a template for consciousness and the evolution of consciousness into the heart as these things are being made aware to me as it's an experiential channel that will be made aware to me personally or professionally in the work I do I am pretty quick up there to share it and that's why you'll find as I'm going along over the last four years there will be shifts and changes and more revelations it doesn't really stay static it's an expanding evolutionary channel, which um, is what energy really is designed to be expanding and evolutionary. Sun's come out again, must be a sign. 
on that note, I will love you and leave you. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me as the channel in all the ways that you do. I hope you guys are doing well. And um, I'll either record one immediately after this or I'll be back on camera again soon. Take care. Bye.